U.S. President Trump keeps the Iran nuclear deal for now. We will discuss the ramifications of his decision and also the importance of French President Emmanuel Macron's visit to China. Hello, I'm Arnold Nainu and this is The Heat. After months criticizing the Iran nuclear deal and threatening to abandon it, U.S. President Donald Trump announced he is keeping the agreement intact. But the president stressed this is the last time he would waive sanctions against Tehran. Trump gave European allies four months to rewrite key provisions of the deal, or he said the U.S. will walk away from it. The White House also issued new non-nuclear-related sanctions against Iranian and Chinese entities and individuals. Well, there is lots to talk about. To discuss all the implications, we welcome Afshin Molavi, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Institute at Johns Hopkins University. Leila Jacinto is a news reporter for France 24 and joins us from Paris. Also with us in Washington, Eleanor mm -hmm. Clift is a political journalist for The Daily Beast and joining us from Beijing. Shindo Xu is a political analyst for China Radio International. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Afshin, let me start with you. So President Trump says he's going to keep this deal right. uh, for now, as I said for at least another 120 days, but he wants changes at the end mm -hmm. of that 120 mm -hmm. days, so he's going to walk away from that. Well, you know, in effect, what he's doing, Anand, is he's negotiating. You know, the, the deal goes on, right? So, so, you know, the deal was closed and signed and sealed, and now it goes on for another four months. Because, in effect, what's going to have to happen is European negotiators and American negotiators are going to have to, they may not be meeting in Vienna the way they were doing in the heyday of the negotiations, but they're going to have to come to an agreement with Iran, because ultimately there is another party to this deal, and that's Iran, and they're going to have to come to some kind of an agreement. But what is happening, Anand, is is he is chilling foreign investment uh, in Iran as a result of this. And, and I think that's also one of his goals. Well, the Iranians have responded. The Iranian Foreign Minister Javed Zarif said in a tweet, Trump's policy in today's announcement amount to a desperate attempt to undermine a solid multilateral agreement, maliciously violating its Paris 26, 28, and 29. JCPOA, that's the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, is not renegotia renegotiable. Rather than repeating tired rhetoric, U.S. must itself bring itself into full compliance, just like Iran. That's right. I mean, you know... So the Iranians are also part of the deal. They are part of the deal, absolutely. And so, so we're going to come back. Maybe we'll be here again talking with you uh, in May and talking about President Trump finally stepping away from the deal. And then, and then what happens? Well, then centrifuges could begin spinning again, and then you have to negotiate a whole new deal all over again. So, so it's, it's something that he's never liked from the very beginning, but he's, never, he's not quite sure how to get the changes he wants to well, get he's to. He's kicking the can down the road, saying this for the benefit of his supporters... He's not really doing anything. He may, but at some point, the, you know, the, can, the, the road is going to end. Eleanor, mm -hmm. let's listen to what the British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson had to say about this nuclear deal. Let's watch. I don't think anybody has so far produced a better alternative to the JCPOA as a way of preventing uh, the Iranians from going ahead with the acquisition of a military nuclear capability. I don't think anybody has come up with a better idea. And I think it's on, incumbent on those who, who oppose the JCPOA really to, to come up with that better solution because we haven't seen it so far. No, 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 does Boris Johnson have a point there? I mean, President oh. Trump has often called us the worst deal ever, but we haven't seen uh, an alternative. He, he has an absolute yeah. point, and Boris Johnson was considered the Trump of the UK. So uh, he's very much in tune with the populism that uh, President Trump tapped into. Uh, Trump has said before that they're going to have to make changes, and the last time he said it, our allies, and which include uh, signatories to that treaty, includes Russia and China, they all basically said, fine, have fun, Mr. President. We're going to continue with this uh, agreement, even if you bail out. And I think Iran, uh, if, if the United States bows out, I think they will continue to honor the agreement, and they would rather... Uh, see the the, the uh, United States being excluded and the odd man out uh, while they're part of the community that agreed to this deal. So, I, I don't I don't think the president's words uh, will necessarily be uh, will necessarily result in action. I think it's uh, words more words from the bully. <laughs> Well, one of the other signatories to that agreement is France, which is where Lila Jacinto is right now. And Lila, um, 
France, of course, a signatory. What's the view from Paris on what's going on here? Well, French President Emmanuel Macron actually called uh, Donald Trump yesterday. This was after the European powers, uh, Britain, uh, France, Germany, uh, and EU foreign policy chief met in Brussels. And Macron actually called Donald Trump. And there have been sources saying that Trump was not very happy with that call. You know, another possible scenario that we could be seeing is, is you know, as Ashwin suggested, that Iran is not happy with the way the U.S. is complying with the deal. And what could actually happen was that Trump could make it so difficult uh, for the Iranians to accept this deal that they themselves would get out of the deal, uh, and Trump would be out of what he calls the worst deal ever. Uh, really, for Europe put up a united front. Uh, it was a very strong showing of unity. But unless the Europeans can really put teeth uh, to, to this show of unity, it's going to be very hard for Iran to actually uh, you know, see the benefits of this deal, uh, which has implications, of course, for, for Iranians' internal domestic stability. We have seen uh, you know, protests over the standard of living. So unless Europe can actually stand up to the U.S., uh, there's, we are in this, the old equation of what can Europe really do? Ashin, what do you make of that? Mm -hmm. Could the United States turn the screws so tight that Iran throws its hands up and says, it's not worth us being in this deal anymore? I think no. I think what Iran will do is is um, if if President Trump you know walks away from the deal, uh, I think what we will see is Iran begin to escalate its centrifuge enrichment. But I don't think Iran will. But then it'll be violating the agreement. Well, right? well they'll they'll probably get, try to get closer you know uh, yeah. to 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 levels you know of of enrichment that okay. that will not violate. The, I don't think they want to walk away from this deal. Right. It's too important for them. They don't want to be seen as the one that walked away from this deal. They'd rather the blame be on the United States. Okay. The other major power that was a signatory is China. And Shindo, China has been very clear about the status of this uh, nuclear pact with Iran. The Chinese foreign minister, Wang Yi, he warned last month that the implementation of the deal should not be affected by any changes in the domestic situations of the countries involved. Clearly a reference to the election here in the United States. So what does China make of these remarks by President Trump and how does China respond to it? Well, I think it, uh, China mostly uh, is in line with, uh, you know, the position of European powers, the position of Russia. That is, like, we should keep intact the deal uh, because, and, you know, everybody knows the deal is not perfect, but it is very effective in slowing down so, any Iranian efforts to acquire a nuclear bomb. Uh, so that's also, you know, the compliance of the Iranian side is also certified by the International Atomic uh, Energy Agency. So there is... Uh, a uh, very a strong record of the Iranian compliance to that deal. So there is basically no excuse for European powers, for Russia or for China, even for the U.S., uh, you know, to impose new sanctions on that. So President Trump is not happy with that. But uh, right now, as, as you know, the foreign minister of, of, of the U.K. said that there's no better alternative. So uh, probably we should continue with the deal until if the U.S. side can provide something new. And also you have to gain the agreement and the support of European powers, Russia, China and Iran.